Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the LA Wave Options U.S. Market Update. As you can see, I'm uh, back up in the mountains, awful lot of travel this time of the year and a lot of evening travel, not a whole lot of sleep. Uh, but in this broadcast, the stocks that you see on your screen now will be the ones featured in this video. And as a quick reminder, you can click on your favorite stock and using the chapters feature uh, in the video, go straight to it. All right, so let's get to talking about what happened in the market. Uh, you take a look at the chart of the SPY uh, when we had a little bit of a doji today. Uh, we had some economic news this week, starting with uh, yesterday, uh, we had the GDP revision come out uh, and it was a surprising revision back to the downside. It was expected at 5.2 and it broke that five barrier. So at 4.9 uh, and that seemed to reverse what was a bit of an ugly day on Wednesday. And then in today's market, uh, we had the Fed's favorite inflation gauge, the PCE deflator, that came in pretty much in line, but uh, nothing to uh, scare the market into worrying about any more uh, Fed rate hikes, and that allowed us to go back to the upside. So going back to the chart, uh, you can see that this move that occurred on Wednesday, uh, close to the uh, low of the day, and then we had the recovery uh, on Thursday from the GDP revision. And then today's PCE deflator gave us a little bit of a move to the upside. If we take a look at the 10 day moving average, you can see really all that occurred on that move down Wednesday was just correcting a slightly overbought condition back down to the 10 day moving average. Uh, so sitting there, we touched it on the low yesterday and the move to the upside today. We are entering the period known as the Santa Claus rally. That's the time of the year between the Christmas holiday and New Year's. Normally, because of very low volume, none of the investment advisor community is uh, working. Um, we kind of drift higher, We're never short a dull market, as they say. The only thing I would concern them out a little bit is what does the doji mean uh, for Monday? But at this point, it seems like uh, we're likely to uh, drift back to the upside uh, next week. Uh, slight little uh, sidebar here. Uh, on a low volume market, if there is any kind of negative news that comes out, then you can get some exaggerated moves uh, with uh, volatility. But uh, with uh, you know already the GDP revision out of the way and the PCEs Fed gauge out of the way, not sure what kind of negative news we could have. But uh, it's the only thing to uh, keep in the back of your mind as uh, we look for uh, that seasonal drift back to the upside uh, in next week's trade. Uh, taking a look at interest rates, interest rates have certainly been helpful to the move uh, to the upside in the market as they continue to come down. A little bit of a bounce to the upside uh, on rates, but uh, nothing too exciting uh, today. And we're uh, in the low end of the range. You can see the wave four is at a 69% correction. We haven't quite disqualified this five wave pattern, but it's really hard for me to think of anything that could uh, cause the Fed to want to uh, raise rates to the point where we have this wave five. So I would kind of expect this LA wave pattern to become disqualified. Uh, it'd be nice to see rates uh, continue to stay down uh, as the market, as you know, already is looking for uh, rate cuts from the Fed next year as their next move. Uh, taking a look at the dollar, the dollar has been pretty interesting. We had another little tick down in the dollar today. We had a lengthy discussion about the dollar and this week's Trade Finder. And by the way, if you haven't registered for Trade Finder, you can do so by going to the link on your screen. We do it every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. We talk to markets, we look for trade ideas, and we have a live Q&A at the end. We have a great community. Love to have you join in uh, on next week's uh, uh, Trade Finder. So taking a look back at the dollar, um, just raised a few points of what does this big move to the downside mean? Obviously, if rates are going to be going lower, that's not necessarily supportive of a higher dollar. Uh, but we don't want to see the dollar move down too far uh, to where uh, we start getting uh, uh, other economies worried about the debt load that the U.S. carries. Uh, we get headlines about that all the time. We kind of want uh, this uh, dollar to stay in this sweet spot. Talked about that last week, somewhere in this um, 100 to 107 range, I think is uh, uh, the, uh, the Goldilocks scenario for the dollar, uh, so that it still shows strength in case we do have a bit of a, uh, a global recession uh, first quarter of next year. Um, normally when that occurs, money moves into the dollar, uh, and we wouldn't want to see the dollar if it does bounce off this low somewhere around 100, 101 uh, to break that 107 level. Uh, we are right at the 78% wave four correction here. That's the last bastion of um, uh, Fibonacci support, the 78.6% level. 
So again, I would kind of expect to see this LA wave pattern become disqualified as well. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, but as long as the dollar stays in this range, I think that's really constructive for the market to continue to move higher. Uh, looking at the VIX, interestingly on the VIX, uh, we had this uh, uh, little bounce back to the upside that occurred on Wednesday. And it almost seems like, well, that was just enough of a bounce to give us room to drift lower on the VIX with low volatility next week. And uh, perhaps a continued drift to the upside in the market. 13 uh, remains the key level. My personal expectation for whatever that's worth is that we're gonna see a return of volatility in January. Y'all heard about uh, credit card debts being at record levels, et cetera. Clearly the consumer has been uh, spending uh, this holiday season, but we did have a couple warnings uh, about the consumer uh, next quarter. And I'll get to those charts here uh, in a few minutes, but uh, hovering around this 13 level, we haven't really wanted to break below 12. Uh, we could have gone down towards 10 or 9, but the market hasn't done that, or at least the VIX hasn't done that. So staying a little higher does give us room to drift lower next week. And then, as I said, I expect um, the return of uh, volatility uh, in January. Now, taking a look at a few of our uh, other markets, uh, if we take a look at the Qs, you can see that uh, uh, very similar chart to what we have on the SPY. Both of them relabeled as we covered last week to wave threes back to the upside. Looks like a really constructive chart to me on the queues. So uh, I do think um, we would continue to move higher unless we get some sort of a unusual move higher in rates. I think that sets up for the wave three to continue here on the queues. The really interesting chart uh, of the markets, I think, is the IWM. Uh, you can see that one kind of broke to the upside today. So uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the IWM. It seems to have uh, found a, a, a some momentum of its own. Uh, we've broken above this 200 level with today's move. We tried to do it a few days ago, earlier in the week, and we got turned back on Wednesday uh, with that big downward move. But here we are back above 200 today. If you've watched any of my videos, you know, I feel like we need a follow through, a confirmation day. So it is interesting that it broke above 200 today, uh, but we'll need that follow through on Monday. This could be an indication if you're a believer that the small caps are risk on, risk off, uh, that perhaps the market really is looking for uh, the rate cuts to fuel uh, a rally next year. I still think that we got to get by the first quarter uh, with uh, some uh, concerns, uh, at least on my part, from a recession. I just can't ignore the fact that we've been inverted in the yield curve uh, for uh, almost a year and a half now. Um, just my 25 plus years going on 28 years now of experience says you never ignore the bond market. It's not a smart thing to do. So uh, keep that in the back of our minds. And uh, uh, again, see if uh, that volatility does return as I suspect it might uh, coming into the first quarter of next year. Kind of curious as to what your thoughts are. Leave a comment underneath this video. And as a reminder, uh, next year, uh, we are going to give away one free of our level three subscriptions each and every month. All you have to do to uh, become qualified is leave a comment under the video and then you go in a pool and it's electronically picked uh, for a winner. And uh, uh, that gives uh, directional trading, uh, triangles. So when we have consolidation and we also have a time strategy, which is a great income strategy, you get a subscription to all three of those. Uh, it's worth thousands of dollars. So we're, we're gonna do that uh, each month uh in the coming year so make sure you leave a comment here and so you know particularly what do you think about this rally in small caps or a comment of uh, whether you feel like there's going to be a recession in first the first quarter a couple of subjects there that you might want to uh, uh take a look at uh, for your uh comment all right so if we take a look at bitcoin uh bitcoin kind of took a little look at that forty thousand level and then turned and ran back to the upside we have a little bit of an ascending triangle here. We talked about that in the live show uh, over on the uh, uh, Hub Financial channel here on YouTube. And if you haven't registered there, go over and register. Uh, again, the Hub Financial channel uh, on YouTube because we do a live show at 2 p.m. Eastern time every Friday. Uh, we talked to Marcus. We talked a lot about uh, cryptos the past couple of weeks. And uh, um, you can ask some questions there as well. So with this ascending triangle here, it doesn't guarantee we've gone through this before. A lot of people say that ascending triangle means an upside breakout. When you have a ascending triangle or a descending or symmetrical triangle, it can break either direction. 
But if we do break to the upside out of this triangle, uh, we're likely heading up towards 50,000 uh, on Bitcoin. That's where the Elliott Wave algorithm likes to see uh, a price on Bitcoin. It feels like we will see 50,000. The only thing is, does it continue up in this wave three or do we correct first, which would indicate a downside breakout of the triangle before moving higher? But uh, regardless, it seems like 50,000 is the next stop uh, in Bitcoin. And as you know, when we've been looking at Bitcoin, we just kind of marry that along with Coinbase. Everybody asks about that. And that comes up on uh, TradeFinder all the time. And man, that's been one heck of a move. Uh, out of Coinbase. And with that move today, we're getting a little vertical. So um, this is a little uncomfortable level for me. Another one of the rules, no security in any time frame gets very far away from the 10-day moving average. So you can see there's some separation there. Uh, so little separation from the 10-day moving average, a bit more of a vertical move out of that uh, consolidation that we had back in early December, right around the 140 level. Uh, so maybe uh, we need a little bit of a break, some backing and filling. Uh, it doesn't have to pull back. It can consolidate and allow the 10-day moving average to catch up. But those two will come back in concert again. You can see uh, up until now, uh, even with this rally in Coinbase, we've just kind of moved right along that 10-day moving average. So the separation, I feel like maybe we need a little bit of a rest here, if not a slight pullback in Coinbase. But it seems like the next uh, target level there for Coinbase is going to be around 200. That's what the algorithm says. So um, it doesn't mean that the move is over in Coinbase and as uh, Bitcoin moves, if it does break out of that triangle to the upside, it's probably drawing this with it. Maybe that's the catalyst to get Coinbase up to 200. But really interesting there, just a little bit of caution uh, on this uh, uh, vertical nature of the move. Uh, we had some earnings that were interesting uh, this week. We had FedEx that came out on their earnings report uh, midweek and they were, you know, Walmart warned uh, about the next quarter uh, in their earnings report, but they were just, you know, kind of ho-hum. They're a little concerned about consumer spending going into the first quarter of next year. Uh, but FedEx uh, was uh, pretty negative uh, on their outlook. And so you can see big tanking move to the downside there on FedEx uh, coming off of that uh, outlook warning, if you will. Now, so we're right here around 250. Maybe we try to hold this level. There's a little more support down around 240. So I wouldn't be surprised to see FedEx drift down there. That might be an interesting place to uh, maybe look at uh, going a little bit long here because obviously with that big massive move down, we're oversold at this point. But uh, 240 looks like um, a, an area where we might find support and, and you can look for a bid. And then that was followed uh, in last night's market with Nike, which was also pretty negative on their guidance uh, going forward as far as uh, the consumer and their desire for their products. Slightly different here there on the drop though, because we kind of came down into an area that could act as support right here around 110. Note that that happens to be right exactly where the wave four projection has been. We haven't labeled this as a wave four yet. I would expect that probably to occur sometime uh, next week um, because we're right in that uh, forecasted move. And as a reminder, when you see this, that doesn't mean we're in a wave four. We have to have one of these labeled circles here to confirm we're in that wave. These are just projections at this point that if the wave four were to start, um, this is where we might find support and we're right there. So that adds into where I think uh, we could find some support here in Nike, along with the fact that this area right here between 105 and 110 uh, was pretty good uh, support uh, all the way from uh, early June into August when we broke below it uh, before we took off on this uh, last run. So maybe we uh, just go sideways here for a while, form this wave four between 105 and 110, and then we'll see if Nike can catch a bid from there. Uh, so looking at uh, some other stocks of interest, we always want to take a look at uh, gold. Um, big move today uh, above 190, but same story here. Uh, we need to have that follow through day. Uh, we look at this and this looks very similar to what I just showed you on the chart of Bitcoin where we had this ascending triangle pattern here. It does look like gold is trying to break to the upside out of it. But once again, we need that follow through or confirmation day uh, on Monday of next week. Just you know, furthering my point, we tried to break above it uh, back here on the uh, 1st of December, no follow through day. So we came back down, found a little support around 185, tried it again. So here we are once again above 190. Can we get the follow through this time and perhaps see a rally in the GLD 
up to the 200 level. Uh, I'd like to see that. Been waiting for uh, a good opportunity for a bid in the GLD for quite some time now, as you know, uh, if you've been watching. Uh, looking at oil, uh, oil finally uh, found a little bit of a bottom there uh, around 65. We had mentioned that this is an area that could be support, uh, and so far it has. This has labeled in the wave four, so that's the difference of when you actually have a labeled wave four versus a projected wave four. So we are in the wave four correction to the upside uh, in oil, but does that mean we have a wave five to the downside still to come? We're right near that 38.2% FIB level, which is the first area of potential resistance. So perhaps uh, the 70 level acts as a little resistance on oil. If the economy is okay and you're buying into the uh, uh, soft landing scenario, um, then uh, we should see some sort of a continued move to the upside in oil. And as a reminder, that wave four can go all the way up to 61.8% in the bounce. So we could easily see 75 in oil. But if we're going to have a recession and the consumer is going to pull back, then perhaps we don't go too much higher in oil and we roll over and head lower. That's going to be another good indicator along with the IWM, I think, as to what the real true health of the consumer is uh, and therefore the economy uh, in the first quarter of next year. Uh, am I going to be right as far as a recession or am I wrong on that? And we're just going to power back to the upside with the Fed looking for rate cuts or the market looking for the Fed to cut rates, I should say. So, we're all friend Tesla. Wanted to show you this. We hadn't looked at this uh, uh, in a bit here, but a really nice ascending triangle. Look at this. Talk about uh, a potential breakout, uh, a big ascending triangle. So we're all the way down. Uh, you measure the mouth of the triangle when you're looking for how far it might move. So down here around 200 to 260. So we're looking for about a 60 point move out of Tesla. And it doesn't look like it's going to be too far off because we're nearing the point of that triangle. Uh, there's no five wave uh, Elliott wave pattern labeled right now. No impulse pattern. A lot of resistance here at 260. If we could break that, I think you could see uh, a move to the upside in Tesla. But it has to do it. It has to make the break. Once again, because it's an ascending triangle, does not guarantee an upside breakout. And if we were to break to the downside, then we'd find ourselves right back down uh, around those lows that occurred uh, in the uh, end of October and beginning of November around 200. Uh, but uh, if you're a fan of uh, the Tesla stock, uh, you're probably going to get a real tradable move here in the not too distant future. So. Uh, watch for the breakout direction here, a breakout with a follow through day, uh, and perhaps you have a, a good upside or downside trade coming out of Tesla uh, to start off the new year. Meta, oh my goodness, if you're looking for a place to go long, uh, we are at the 38.2% wave five uh, extension here. So uh, that's that first FIB level that I was just talking about. So we could power past that and go up to 61.8. Uh, uh, as well. Uh, and when you take a look at the DMI, which is my favorite indicator that helps to uh, confirm what I see from Elliott Wave charts, uh, looks pretty good. We have the positive directional indicator way above the negative. The ADX is moving up. It's broken above that all important 20 level. So the DMI looks supportive for Meta to continue this extraordinarily uh, upward move that we've had coming all the way off that uh, flat period back uh, at the end of last year, beginning of this year. Uh, and what a year that's been for Meta. Uh, and it doesn't look like that move is over yet, as evidenced at least by the DMI. Uh, so uh, taking a look uh, at uh, our favorite international market real quick, the INDA. Um, we had... Uh, uh, a bit of a move down uh, with that Wednesday move. It almost like it scared the uh, INDA just a little bit. You can see uh, a bit of a move down and then just turned around and came right back to the upside. Still have a, a constructive um, DMI here, although that ADX has gotten up to 40 and moved down. So perhaps we need a little bit of sideways move here out of the INDA. Looks like the strongest part of that move in that wave three is over. So perhaps a little bit of backing and filling here uh, is warranted as well. Uh, you can see that we were able to get back above the 10-day moving average after closing below it briefly uh, at Wednesday's uh, close, but right back uh, above it. But uh, it does seem like uh, perhaps uh, uh, the INDA may be a little tired from this uh, move that started uh, really uh, towards the end of November. So it's been a great December for the INDA, except for 
Wednesday's move as well. So uh, perhaps some consolidation there through the INDA. Uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, uh, watching uh, this year. I uh, hope everybody's enjoyed a great year. hope you have a great holiday season. You get a chance to uh, spend some quality time with family, family friends, and loved ones. And uh, we will be off next week, so there'll be no market update next weekend. And we'll look forward to the next one where we'll have an opportunity to talk about how January has started off for the market. So have a great holiday season, everybody. Take care. If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market is likely going to go, and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.